Hi everyone, I'm at the Ontario Place enjoying an exhibit by uh, one of my uh, former students, uh, Connor Dickey, and I'm uh, trying to control the CN Tower lights with my brain waves. Basically, to get the lights to change colour, the more relaxed you are, the slower the light's going to spin on the tower. And then the more you focus and concentrate, the faster the light's going to spin. So you'll have three minutes in total, so I'm just going to put you on live now and you'll start controlling the lights. Okay, cool. Because you were in a bit of a relaxed state, the lights are in slow, and the more you focus, the faster it's going to spin. Oh my god, it's going through the roof! <laughs> Try spelling your name backwards in your head. Hi, so I'm Connor Dickey, and uh, I'm talking about the Interacts on Bright Ideas experience at the 2010 Winter Games Ontario House. Um, so these uh, headsets here, we use them to. Uh, essentially understand when somebody is in an alpha state or a beta brain state, look that up. Um, and uh, so the cool thing is about this installation is this headset is about $200. When I first started working with Interaxon about one year ago, um, the technology that we used to sense the alpha and beta brain state was about $5,000. Um, so the cool thing is that people always ask us, well, what's the practical application of this? And um, Really, a lot of the practical applications have been taken care of in terms of assistive devices for people with disabilities or something like that. But now, it's so much cheaper that it's a consumer product. So we're kind of exploring what's going to be fun with it. What kind of ways can we use this interface to uh, expand people's entertainment experiences and communication experiences? So what do we see here, Kyle? Uh, right here, that's just the background Max patch that controls the audio and vibrotactile experience. So how's the data coming in? Uh, so there's a whole bunch of things that we use. So right now this is a Bluetooth connection from the headset to the Mac Mini in the back of this box here. Um, and then across all these Mac Minis they're all networked uh, with gigabit ethernet to uh, three Mac Pros in the back room that are doing the local graphics as well. And uh, then we just use a fiber optic cable to send data back to the three locations, Toronto, Ottawa, and Niagara Falls, to control uh, a series of Mac Minis that are in those locations, but then interface with the custom lighting show at the remote location. So what did you say the delay was? Uh, okay, so if we're doing it live here on the simulator, it's certainly within uh, one second. When we're going back and forth, so from Vancouver with a live video feed, uh, sending data over the internet to the remote site in Ontario and then getting a live video feed back, it's easily, it's still under one second actually. Very cool. Um, and it's constant, so that really helped us out. We were worried that it was going to be a big delay, but we actually have a dedicated video feed from CTV, I think, at these locations, so it's not, uh, it's not like a Skype video or anything like that. Cool. Well, thank you very much. Thanks. My pleasure.